Hey everyone, this is Dave from Arceus Creative here to talk about what you can expect when shooting with or without the Metabones Micro Four Thirds Speed Booster S version. All the gear we'll be using is available for you to rent from your friends at LensProtogo.com. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some of the basic visual differences in footage taken with or without the Speed Booster, some of the flexibility and variety that a Speed Booster gives you in post production and then walk through a practical application of that flexibility in a short example sequence. First, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of a shot taken with and without the Metabone Speed Booster. You can see that this first shot, taken without the Speed Booster, is a tad dark and pretty tightly composed when you compare it to this shot with the Speed Booster attached. With the Speed Booster, you get an extra stop or so of exposure, and it's a little closer to a full frame composition. One of the benefits of this is that if you're shooting in tight quarters, you can actually get a wider scaled image when using the speed booster than without using it. Both of these clips were shot at an f-stop of 2.2, a shutter speed of 50, an ISO of 800, our Kelvin was set to 3500, it's at 24 frames per second, and we're at 4K resolution. Now let's take a look at a different set of shots and compare their scalability and the versatility in their composition and framing. Here we've got an exterior shot of some flowers outside of our office. Let's call this version, shot without the speed booster, a tight, and this one, shot with the speed booster, a mid. You can see that in the tight shot, we lose a lot of the flowers and details that are viewable along the edge of the frame in the mid. What I really like about footage taken with a speed booster is that I can practically replicate the shot that was taken without it if I wanted to. By stacking the two clips and decreasing the opacity of the tight, I can see how the compositions of the two shots compare. If I scale the mid up to about 145%, I'm able to get roughly the same composition as the tight shot taken without the speed booster. Keep in mind that the success of this is going to be contingent on the resolution of the footage. Since this was shot in 4K, I can make this crop and reframe with little to no visual degradation. The wider shot taken with the speed booster also allows me to shift the composition to move objects within the frame while still remaining basically a mid shot. While I can definitely still move in and reframe the composition of the tighter shot taken without the speed booster, I have to scale into a greater degree and the shot becomes more of an ultra tight. Lastly, let's work with another set of shots to cut a short sequence together. Here we've got a shot of a tape dispenser in our office. Again, you can see that in comparing the two shots, we lose a lot of the objects surrounding the tape dispenser in the shot without the speed booster versus the one taken with it. In playing the footage back, I've got a hand that comes into frame and tears off a piece of tape, which you can see in both the tight and the mid. Now let's say that when working with this footage, I may want the pacing to be slightly faster than it is when sticking with a single shot. What the speed booster footage allows me to do is to crop in and get a usable two-shot sequence from this one clip. I can definitely do this with the non-speed booster footage, but I won't have as big of a compositional difference, which means I'll have to scale in way more if I want to avoid a jump cut. A general rule of thumb is that a 30% size or 30 degree change is the minimum you'd need to avoid a jump cut and in the shot without the speed booster, this 30% size change definitely isn't as smooth or intentional looking as it is in the shot taken with the speed booster. To wrap up, footage taken with a speed booster grants at least an extra stop of exposure, a wider composition, and ultimately more options than footage taken without one. If you're shooting on a camera with a crop sensor, or know that you'll be shooting in a confined or dimly lit space, a speed booster is an excellent tool for overcoming all these shortcomings at once. Speaking from experience as an editor, I always prefer more variety and options over less. And the scalability of 4K footage taken with a speed booster provides plenty of options when footage may be otherwise limited. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found this comparison helpful. And remember that all the gear used in this tutorial is available for you to rent from your friends at LensProToGo.com.